Hi, my name is Honey Ogunjay, and welcome to another episode of Analyze This. With me today, as always, is my wonderful co-host. TJ Andrews. And today we're going to be talking about the Nigeria fashion industry. So after the technology industry in Nigeria, the one that's really after my heart is the fashion industry in Nigeria. And the fashion industry in Nigeria is a big industry. And most of the time, what we're seeing from it is fashion shows, the glitz, the glamour. I mean, Nigerians as a whole, we're one of the most fashionable people in the world, if you ask me. Um, so there's a lot of people talking about fashion. But today we're going to be analyzing it like... What is the story with the Nigerian fashion industry? What's the history? What's the current status? And where is it really going? We're going to be breaking it down today on this episode of Analyze This. So Tunji, what do you think of the Nigerian fashion industry? Well, I, I, I see it pretty much in the same way I see the Nigerian music industry, uh, Nollywood, those industries that have a lot of glitz, glamour, especially around their events, their weeks and all of that. But uh, very little structure. The industry seems very fragmented and very sparsely apart too. So you see a, a, a group of what you see a lot is people in the design part of the of the industry and not very many people in the manufacturing end of the industry where that is you know a, a, a place that is upper in the value chain, but it builds a lot of value. I, I think because we still import a lot mm -hmm. from buttons to zippers to you know clips and so many things so i wonder if we really have an industry yeah i have to say that i agree but i think what we miss is that the nigerian fashion industry has so much opportunity it's yeah, such a yeah, huge industry so. there's so much spend even though we see a lot of it going into products that we're importing mm -hmm. but i mean the the potential is enormous i remember back in the day we used to have all those, uh, the Nigerian textile industry, we had Aswani, where we used to produce our own textiles in the northern part of Nigeria. There's a huge sort of textile and, um, and even garment manufacturing, a little bit of the leather industry going on there. And that industry was really like booming at the time. Mm -hmm. Now, personally, for me, at Fashba, I'm personally concerned with like the Nigerian fashion industry because I think that the Nigerian markets, I think, and Nigerian consumers, I think that there's still a lot to serve there because you say the industry is very fragmented. 70% of people are still shopping in open air markets. So mm -hmm. for the consumer, they're having a horrible shopping experience, no uh, lack of options. They don't mm -hmm. have any sort of mm -hmm. return policy. So how do we fundamentally start to well, change that? While, while, while it is true that a lot of people are still looking into the foreign market, I think um, a lot more people are open to finding Nigerian alternatives. Yes. Nigerian alternatives that are fairly um, relatively priced and Nigerian alternatives that have good quality. Exactly. So once you can find both of them, you'll see Nigerians significantly switch. I manufacture here, and I tell you, it's like pulling my hair out most of the time. Mm -hmm. Even when we're thinking of talking to investors about taking the fashion industry seriously, most investors just think that the fashion industry is something that I'm sorry to say this, like their wife or their girlfriend does. Nobody looks at it yeah, as a serious business. Yeah. Why don't people take fashion Well, I, I did see um, a, a woman who was in the fa manufacturing end. She mm -hmm. came to the capital market to raise money. and I, 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 That's amazing. Yeah, I, I, I hosted that event and it was beautiful. She spoke about the value chain. I was, I was so overwhelmed. She had did a you lot cry? of the capital market. Because I've seen a video of you crying before, but carry on. Ah. <sighs> She had a lot of the capital market there. Please ignore her. <laughs> she had a lot of the capital market and she explained the details of the value chain and how that part of her segment could unlock a lot of value across. Yeah. And a lot of the capital market um, investment houses were there. They liked what they heard, but they didn't understand it. So they couldn't really advise their investment houses properly. So, so what did I she get the investment what, that she needed? I, I don't think she did. Yeah. But you see, here's another thing I also understand. Part of the fashion industry growing also is to have fashion analysts who can then join investment houses and advise investment houses rightly in how to invest into fashion. Because yeah. the investment houses want to invest in anything. It's just they need to totally understand, understand the value right. chain of what they're investing in. So I think it's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The industry needs to grow leaps and bounds, but it's, it's not yet yeah. there. I think that's one of the, that's one of the major challenges I face when talking to investors in Nigeria. That people like it. They like the idea. They see that there's it potential, but they don't understand it. And they've mm -hmm. never seen a business at scale, like someone building a billion dollar fashion industry in, in Nigeria. Nigeria before. Yeah. So literally what I'm asking you to do is take a risk on me, take a risk 
on fashion, take a risk on the, on the industry. industry. Take a risk on Nigeria. Take a risk on Nigeria. It's, take a risk on the Nigerian it's, consumer. And the guy is just like, let me just go and buy property. Just, I'm telling you, just go and buy one house. Or, or let me just go and invest in oil and gas. True, you know, true, gig. So, true. It, you know, but I think that we have to keep, and that's what I do, at least in my business, that we have to keep pushing. We have to mm -hmm. keep building. We have to keep showing the metrics. And also talking about the fashion side and trying to under, make people understand that there's so many different areas in the value chain that you can play in. You know, someone can be rich just from manufacturing zips if they support yeah, the and whole And that was industry. what that lady said. Mm -hmm. She was like, it, she, they, they import the zippers she uses because she makes, she has a manufacturing company that makes thousands and thousands of garments. And she was like, if there was, if she could scale higher, she could now have a manufacturing company come to Nigeria and set up because they were supplying her zippers. Mm -hmm. But she's not been able to scale and that was why she came to the capital market. But the capital market did not give her money. Shame on you. And so we have with us on the show to um, lend voice to the talk on um, fashion. We have a fashion entrepreneur. She's the creative director of Adriel Amos Deferi. And basically, the name is the brand. Welcome. Hi, Hi nice to be here with you guys. Great, great, great to have you. Um, I mean, we've been talking about the value chain of um, um, fashion. And I'm trying to wrap my head around it. Why isn't the industry a bit more structured to be to at least give some value to um, the, the work that we do participants in the industry um, I would think uh, I suppose it's because we don't have enough professionals a lot of people that dabbled into fashion and that's like a good probably don't take us seriously it was something they did out of um, not to be lazy or jobless oh some rich guy has a wife oh just open fashion house so it's usually thought of as the the thing that the lazy wives yes yeah, the lazy skill. wife's hobby yeah not hobby even, not even skill not even skill not even business nothing it's just, just okay hobby. something, something kid, should, or that child yeah. that didn't do well in school just that likes to dress up and play dress up set up a fashion house and that was the notion growing up i think so mm -hmm. that stayed with us growing up up till now and then even people that started to be in the fashion industry they didn't take themselves seriously and all they do that we like to front or have sort of become celebrities they don't really think in terms of Naira and Kabul, in terms of five years time will my company be like, as long as they're popular, they're cool, they can access the cool parties, they're fine. I think that's mm. the major problem. But if we look deep within, the other people that work with manufacturing, who people don't usually associate with, they're doing a great job. Like the Abbas of this world, the people who are just producing shirts, we probably don't know who they are, mm -hmm. but, but they are doing, a, business doing a great business out of it. We have foreigners coming to Nigeria, sort of um, fashion fa um, manufacturing, factories. So I just think it's the face yeah. of fashion in Nigeria. That's what we have a problem with. Not that the industry is not there, not mm. that people are not trying. We had a lot of government legislation that that was against the Nigerian fashion designer industry. or fashion industry until Abbasanjo came into power and banned importation of foreign things. Nigerians have a very foreign palette. That was the first thing we had to struggle with. So growing up, even your school shoes, if you wore bata, your friends would snide at you in school. You had to be wearing clacks or moccasins and stuff like that. You wore bata? Yeah, like in QC, wow. if you didn't wear moccasins or clacks, no, yeah, were, we were both in QC, so you know, QC you were like an girls. outcast. You if you didn't to. have that Max and Spencer cardigan, yeah, oh gosh, no, I would not go yeah. back to school. Yeah, so so I think we we. <laughs> A lot of people grew up with that mentality. Wow. <laughs> Real talk <laughs> and, right here. And then Obasanjo tightening the borders had to, you know. And then the, the, the local manufacturers or even just our textile industry wasn't protected. Oh, okay. We had yeah. this foreign palette and the people just went, all the importers and exporters, our Igbo brothers, and just so that importing from China. If the borders were locked and we really had to... And we protected it. Yes, it would have grown. So we had mm -hmm. a lot of problems with government legislation. Then the banks that were, you know... It broke my heart when my banker once said to me, after I tried to process this story, I'd done everything right. I needed an 8 million naira facility and I had 4 million naira of my own. So I wanted just 4 million of theirs to pay back within a year. And at the end of the whole hula bulu, all they would tell me is fashion is not a recognizable SME. That broke my heart. Like, wow. yeah. But yeah, that broke, that broke my heart. I'm like, I don't want you to do. Okay, this so how do you go about funding like a business like yours? It's high growth. You have different outlets. You have a manufacturing base. How do you, well, how so do you far, funnel in the banks? It's around? been, it's been um, reinvesting the profits back into the business. And then I got a grant. You win grants. So there are some, there are now some government opportunities and facilities. Now we have that facility with BOI that whoever wants to access can go access at, uh, I think it's 9% rate. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to access that? I haven't okay. gone to get it, but okay. I'm sure that if I, when I do get my papers together and want to go for it, it will be something I can access. I know a few people. 
Oh, I know a few people that have got it. Okay. Um, Lady Biba got it. Okay. Yes. I didn't for, actually know. I didn't know anyone. For manufacturing. Doesn't. So you okay. just go to BOI, you get your papers together, they will get auditors to come into your business and see if what you say is really true. True. Right. Then they would invest. But they would invest on certain things, not on things like stores. It's just on manufacturing. Okay. Mm. So now so they will true. invest on your machines, they would invest on um, your stock, like yeah. buying raw materials okay. to get your work done. But so there's that, some I'm kind sure. of support now. There's then. now support. support yeah. And I think um, with the different governments we've had in the past, let's say, 10 years, it's been evolving for good. Mm -hmm. But I think we need more proper legislation. We need more fashion schools. Not just I have a private fashion school, but that's not just what I'm talking about. We need pro fashion professionals teaching fashion. So there are ways around these things. We have the knowledge, but we are not taking advantage of it. We are not opening our eyes to it. We just need more information, more education, and we need the support of the government and the financial sector. And I think a lot will come together better. So what do you think about the pricing conversation and this whole three-tier sort of hustle of the Nigerian fashion industry? It feels like we have luxury, we have sort of market, and we don't have a lot of sort of affordable options. Yeah. Well, I think we and do why have, do you think it's so expensive? I think we do have affordable and um, low, low. It affordable is relative, right? Yes. Mm, well, is affordable, is no, no, no. I think if you want to wear a brand, if you want to wear names, even if you're abroad and you want to wear names, it, does, it doesn't come cheap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just think people think because it's made in Nigeria, it should be cheap. Yeah, how do we change that perception? It is the, it's the uh, Oyibo colonial mentality. It's not going to go away in one day. They just really, ah, didn't you just make it? Is it not just in your bedroom there that you made it? Uh -uh. They you don't have office. You yeah, don't have showroom. They, they forgot <laughs> that you're going to deal with the Nigerian unprofessional, difficult, strong-headed tailors. You're going to deal with the roads. You're going to deal with the power. You're going to deal with legislation. You're going to deal with banking. All the normal issues that have work with other industries affect mm. fashion. Fashion is no different. So if you don't expect telecommunications to be cheap in Nigeria, don't expect fashion to be cheap in Nigeria. If you want to wear a brand, then pay for it. If you, there's a lot of made in Aba, affo affordable, available, good quality out there in Yaba market, out there in Katangwa, out there in the Aswani market. Cut your coat according to your size. Wow. 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 You have, you have, then there yeah. is look at there's your street tailor. You are harsh on, on the Nigerian public. No, no, no. If you know what they the want. Nigerian designers go through to come out with their collections, you compare them every day with the foreign ones. The foreign ones have government support. The foreign ones have an industry that has been there for sometimes 200 years, 100 years, years and years of good craftsmanship passed down from generation to generation. And they are dealing with Nigeria where we did not even like what was ours in the first place. If you say you wanted to be a designer, when I was going to fashion school, everyone called me Taylor. My whole family almost, uh, how would I call it, disowned me. My friends from high school did not talk to me for years until I became a celeb, so to speak. I was that person that went, they went to school with it. They couldn't speak her name out in public. I went so, to do Taylor. I went to do Taylor mm. in a polytechnic. Mm. Insult upon injury. I'm telling you. <laughs> he didn't even go to a polytechnic. He didn't even go to, to a university or go to FIT. Huh? Yeah? He just went to one year back somewhere and said she was mm. going to school. So when I saw them, those uni like girls, they were like, oh. So are you taking out your anger on the no, you're not taking <laughs> out the pricing anger. of the clothes? They should it's because, you guys, it's because of you guys we have to no, pay expenses. I'm not they're not taking out. I'm just saying, if they wanted a, a good if you if they wanted, what's the young those young designers that come off Project One Way? Christian Siriano. Yes. Can they afford to buy his clothes? No. Well, I think that there's this whole thing in Nigeria that we think that anything that's coming from made in Nigeria, we it must be all cheap, be able which to is afford even more it. Expensive. I don't know where that idea Christian comes Siriano from. will buy his fabrics cheaper than I will buy my fabrics if, if I wanted to use the same quality as he, he, he was using. Because he has, maybe he's in a corporation, he has links, he can get it cheaper, it's easier for him, he can get a loan, a facility to do all of that. I won't get any of that. And do you want me to produce on that same level? I will sweat blood and tears to get that and i will still sell five times cheaper than him and you say i'm expensive mm. how old is christian sirani which did he green from 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 fashion school and 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 nigerian designer is expensive we are not expensive that is the truth so adria has definitely been telling it like it is like if you don't she's harsh yes she's quite Very harsh, harsh. you can't afford the thing just go to aba but what Absolutely. about aba what's going on there like everyone keeps hyping about the mass production happening there have you been what's up no, I haven't been to Aba by myself yet. Yes. <laughs> I want to go. We should still go. Okay. What would you I can get you guys in by, so. I just want to go and yeah. see what it's like. I, there's so much hype. There's this whole um, Aba Made in Aba campaign now going well, on. Made in Aba has been dead since when we were kids. I mean, we've been hearing about Made in Aba shoes, Made in Aba bags. I had some of them when I was a student. 
<laughs> you ever take this? And you know, made in Abad has been there since. What I do get from Abad though is fabrics, because the fabrics that come in from China or wherever go to Abad first, then most of the people I buy from go to buy from Abad and bring back. To Lagos. Whoa. So wait, the fabric comes from China to Lagos courts, obviously. Okay. Then Lagos, the people in Abba, the warehouse owners, the uh, they it so goes to Abba. From Lagos to Abba, then from Abba back, back, back to, to Lagos. Lagos. Because again. we buy in smaller quantities, I would suppose. Oh okay. yeah, the, the Abba guys is the the buy the, bulk. the, the base, the bulk. Yeah. They do the ready the So you locally Abba. source from like Abba and all these things? Not directly from Abba. Okay. But from a few suppliers that go, go to Abba to bring stuff. back. I mean, we, like we said at the beginning, we saw somebody uh, from the fashion industry come into the capital market to try and raise funds. Like I said, I'm not sure she's gotten the funds, but I mean, it's a, it's the first step in in a long no line yeah. of of you know movement forward for the industry. So, where do you see it? Uh, let's say ten years from now. Ten years from now, I see Nigeria being the power player, at least on the African continent, for mm -hmm. fashion garment manufacturing. We have the population, we have the manpower. We have the, um, I hope we have the capital market, we have the money here. Yeah. If the government will support, if we have the right administration in place, and I'm sure a lot more people would have gotten proper education, um, and the people that are not serious would have fallen by the wayside, then those that are serious about the future of this industry would see it to the next stage. I, I, it's a very bright future. The first thing is interest. There's a lot of interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And fashion designers and fashion entrepreneurs are now being respected. Yeah. So it's no more a taboo. It's not something you just hide under the carpet. It's not something we can talk mm -hmm. about here. Yeah. We can talk about in business forums. So yeah. it will change drastically, I'm sure, in the next years from now. 10 years. Yeah. Well, I, I, and I have to say that, you know, what she's saying is correct, like especially with the interest. We're really seeing a growing mm -hmm. interest in the Nigerian fashion industry. So I think it's really high time that we start to capitalize on that. One part which we didn't even get to was discussing like the online aspect of fashion, especially in Nigeria. And I think that's also where we're going to see Grew a lot the of next growth, 10 yeah. years. I mean, yeah. four years ago when I pioneered fashion online here, it was so strange. But now I'm seeing so many new brands taking to online and being online only. And that's really also helping with distribution, which is one of mm. our main problems in terms mm. of how do we, how get do you be a fashion brand, but how do you get it to go around the country? How do you get it to go around um, Africa? So I think online, especially mobile commerce, another aspect we need to watch out in the fashion industry. Absolutely. This has definitely been a very interesting topic. Huh? Yes, it has. It has. Uh, so thank you very much, guys. Uh, you can basically let us know what your fashion stories are. Um, I mean, where your clothes come from. If you bought a patent shoe like me, that is by a Nigerian brand, but was made in Turkey, let us know. Uh, you can contact me at 2J Andrews, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, everywhere on the internet, 2J Andrews. And also? And you can reach me at Honey Ogundei on Twitter, on Snapchat, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. I would love to hear your fashion stories, especially your Made in Nigeria stories. And your? Um, Adria Mustafiri on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, across all channels. I'm not Snapchat though. <laughs> so, and then you can you can reach me and ask questions and let's rub, rub minds and as to how to get this fashion industry where we really want to go to the land of our dreams. Fantastic. You. Um, you can also follow at and Danny TV and don't forget to use the hashtag analyze this. Till next time, guys. Have a great week. Peace.